Uganda's internet usage has grown in recent years. The most wonderful innovation I have seen is the internet. Oh, the people from, from, from the age group of 26 years to 35 use internet more. Those who come what? What should the government do before making internet laws? They should do consultation with all, all the persons. We have a right to privacy, so this one should be made compulsory. I've, been, I've also been thinking that uh, my information is safe. I'm still lacking. These are issues that we are raised in the report, but also came out during our regional meetings. Uganda's internet usage has grown in recent years with over 10 million users. Social media penetration is estimated at about 5.6% of the urban population. Currently, internet penetration per population size is around 24.5% in Uganda, according to World Bank finding. The Uganda Communications Commission Sector Report 2019 indicated that Uganda's internet penetration was 37% with over 23 million subscribers. The commission indicated that Uganda had about 5.5 million active smartphones and the rest being feature phones. However, for over 10 years, different reports have indicated that the more internet usage increases is the more the state continues to violate citizens' digital rights. Between August to January 2021, Unwanted Witness conducted a study as part of an evidence-based advocacy approach to strengthen the effectiveness and enjoyment of digital rights in Uganda, which was launched recently. Between late 2020 and early 2021, Unwanted Witness conducted a study. This study was purposely to find out the, how the legal framework uh, the legal framework impacts on the enjoyment of digital rights and also to understand whether Ugandans understand that they have a right to, to uh, dig, they understand digital rights and whether they have uh, they understand that they have a right to internet to the use of the internet so um, this report came out early this year 2020 and it was launched on the 12th of February uh, in Kampala during that launch, we had different stakeholders uh, within, uh, during the launch. After the launch, Unwanted Witness embarked on the information dissemination tour to the four regions of Uganda to circulate the report findings to selected districts. For example, the Eastern in Soroti, we went to West Nile in Arua, we went to Central Masaka, we did go to, uh, to the Albertine region, Hoima, we also went to um, to the Renzo region, specifically Kasese. The dissemination started in West Nile in Arua district, where the unwanted witness team held dissemination meetings and discussions purposely to publicize the digital rights enjoyment and governance in Uganda. What should the government do before making internet laws? They should do consultation in all, all the persons who are going to benefit from this the impact of uh, shutting down the internet and other issues, the consultations will well will be done. That's why most of these laws are very hard to enforce. Because the views of the local person was not sought. The study focused on addressing key objectives which included building on the existing knowledge about digital rights and internet governance in Uganda, investigate factors hindering the enjoyment of digital rights and internet freedoms in Uganda, and to attain recommendations for policy formation and review for digital rights enjoyment. I've not read through this report, but I strongly believe it's a report that is quite new about what we have gone through recently, or what we are going through in this country about the digital rights, especially the internet and the rest. I really want to say that yes, we have advanced so much in technology, but not all Ugandans, isn't it? Mm -hmm. Take for instance West Nile. Yes, we can talk about Uganda, but limit yourself to West Nile. Even further move to Arua. 
where me and you is how many of us have access to this technology so this shows that the people from all the people from 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 the age group of 26 years to 35 use internet more often than the other age groups from arua the unwanted team proceeded to Kasesa district where a similar arrangement and discussions were conducted with key stakeholders. Kasese, like any other major towns, the usage of data gadgets like phones is on the increase, which means they easily access information. In my life on earth, and I've spent close to slightly more than half a century on this earth, the most wonderful innovation I have seen is the internet. Because you can see how banking has become easy, how communication has become easy, how even planes now can fly without getting lost. Everything on this world has become easy because of the internet. Even business has become very easy. Yes, we are happy because of this internet revolution. But it has also come with its own what? Challenges. Internet is good, but the spirit of the internet is okay. But it's necessary. It has come with so many disadvantages that uh, have made basically more harm than good. Much as this internet is for us here to be used, but how are we using it? What are we posting? We have seen people misusing or abusing the digital space by posting things that are not really good for the, the information, I mean for the public. It was clear in Kasese that the awareness of digital rights as it's indicated in the Digital Rights Enjoyment and Governance in Uganda report among the key stakeholders was limited. With a discussion in Kasese, all stakeholders agreed that there is need to increase more awareness among the population to be cautious about their digital rights and protection. So I would advocate that uh, uh, Madam Ramadan and your team, maybe through, our, through the state organism, we need to embark on a serious sensitization of our people to ensure that you know to, that their rights are get at the four and at the laws. There is a need of engagement, need of more sensitization, so that these people at grassroots are able to pick and understand the usage of the internet. I saw the Reverend really putting it out that we need this kind of sensitization. I think it should be in the dockets, I mean uh, in the plans, the worker plans of unwanted witness, to see how they can engage these stakeholders through uh, this kind of sensitization. I'm going to report to my CEO as well, She's Mohindo Joli, and then other people who work within the organization that they are people who can defend our rights on the digital space. At the same time, having seen the report that we have launched today in the Rwenzori region, in the Kasese, that we can have work together and we realize something and then shoot up to realize our goals and our dreams. I'm going to use my knowledge, the knowledge that I've learned from the unwanted witness, knowing that they are also behind us and also the fact that they can always be willing to come back and actually give us more knowledge on how we can tackle some of these issues. From Kasese, the dissemination exercise was taken back to central region in Masaka district. By 2014, Masaka district had a population of 103,829 and the number has possibly increased not only in people, but also the use of digital systems. The dissemination was successful as stakeholders welcomed the Digital Rights Report, which they said was an eye-opener to many. What are we learning from this as leaders is that we must engage into the campaign uh, of doing the advocacy for, for these rights. 
And secondly, the government must be, we appeal to government. We are all part of government, but we continue to appeal to authorities that they take this matter seriously. Otherwise, we are being left to these companies, to, 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 uh, that these companies take advantage of people's unawareness of their rights, and they take exorbitant fees from us. Everybody who has attended this workshop and concentrates on reading this report will get much information on digital rights and will know when and where these rights are being misused or are being infringed on. First of all, I would love to thank Anointed Witness for this awareness. Though I wouldn't say that I know much, I'm still lacking. I still need some more of the internet, managing my website, managing all my Twitter accounts and the Instagram because sometimes bloggers hack into them and they, the result, they disorganize your information. So um, my humble request to unwanted witness to bring more awareness how we can protect those accounts because fine we have the strong passwords but there is some way those people can hack into the, what, the systems and disorganize them. Stakeholders that included community leaders asked unwanted witness to widen the dissemination activities up to village levels and create more awareness about digital rights, privacy and protection, citing the need to respect and follow the United Nations Universal Declaration of Human Rights. And there is a need of more workshops so that we, we see how these digital rights can be passed to all people in their communities and they understand a lot about the digital rights. Through discussion groups, it was made easy for participants to understand the report for easy feedback. We were asked the challenges that we meet along the way as we use internet. We say that among the challenges, there are high data costs. I think this is not debatable. We have a slow network. In this exercise, some members raised their concern of lack of internet connection and affordability in their areas, which they asked government to work on. They're complaining of the high internet, but also the connectivity is very slow and the level of access, you know, not everybody accesses the internet. Government has been coming out, pulling down social media. Up to today, Facebook is not yet back restored. These are issues that we are raised in the report, but also came out during our regional meetings. Similarly, the same arrangements were replicated in Hoima district, where the report was welcomed as an eye-opener to many participants. Uh, the fact that we are all here through media invitation, I'm very sure that there is a big impact, especially when you look at the state of digital rights and governance in Uganda. Our being here is an evidence that there is a, a level where we are going as a country and especially the world at large. Through formation working groups, more engagements were made by Unwanted Witness team as they further discussed the state of digital rights enjoyment and governance in Uganda report. What do you think should be done to protect the personal data? Let's encourage people to use secure VPNs like the premium. We need a lot of digital security training so that people to know how they can keep the information guarded, how their gadgets can be guarded when they are on internet. We have a right to privacy, so this one should be made compulsory. It should be respected by everyone, including the service providers of internet. Participants were concerned about the findings of the report, especially the continued violation of rights of journalists and the lack of assurance of their privacy in the process of using data. We all focus on Facebook, WhatsApp, Twitter, that we are too addicted on those areas. But we have other areas which organizations invest money in information management systems, how information is transmitted from, uh, let's say, Buseruka up to Kampara and it is again saved in the crowd. So those are the areas that we need to discuss. In that, the discussion shifts from that people misuse Facebook, misuse Twitter, 
because the Twitter, the Facebooking, some people whom you see online, they have paid, that is employment to them to, to do their work, to blast the government, to blast everyone. So we need to look at it in detail and understand. It has been a very interesting event and it's an opportunity for us mostly, those who are in the extractive industry as human rights defenders, to learn and understand the rights we have as human rights defenders in relation to information access and digital security. Uh, what I've learned that it is my individual right, it is a social justice to have access to internet. Not only having access to internet, but having safe, secure, and affordable access to internet. The dissemination tour in the four regions ended in one of the fast growing towns, which is Soroti. It also has an increasing number of internet users across all social media platforms. Unfortunately, it was evident that like many Ugandans, they had inadequate knowledge about their digital rights. In all the parts of the country that we've been to, we've discovered that this is a new concept. Even when people use the internet, it's a new concept. People do not understand that it's their right to use the internet. It is my first time to attend this. This, this meeting and this course and to get to know this information because personally I've been just going to the net using it I've been thinking that it has been free information I, I've, been, I've also been thinking that my information is safe as it goes out but today I have learned that I think uh, there's need to know more about it. I also learned about the policies and the legal framework and of course also I also learned about other government agencies and, and, and those policies that help in terms of uh, regulating uh, the access to internet. So I learned a lot of things in this uh, today's training. That uh, I also learned that uh, the dissemination of the findings alone um, was inclusive in a way that uh, during uh, the research times, all, all people were visited, including personal disability, whereby 17 people were visited and they gave their honest opinion. So to me, this kind of uh, engagement today has empowered me to understand that uh, as far as we're human beings in Uganda or citizens, we have a right to digital internet because this is human rights uh, in, uh, connected with the technology. The dissemination exercise was successful in Soroti as many participants indicated the urgency of more sensitization of information concerning their digital rights, protection and privacy. So if we don't speak about issues that are affecting us in our country, there's nobody going to speak about them. The unwanted witness has come as an opener to us while calling upon us to have both of us to have engagement in where we are. In the state of digital rights, there are several loopholes that restrict its enjoyment, which include limited and high charges imposed on the cost of internet bundles, poor internet connectivity in most parts of the country, which hinders proper use and also increased rates of cyberbullying. The state of digital rights and infrastructure offers both promise and peril. Promise in the form of extraordinary ease of access to a vast array of information through internet penetration and peril due to a lack of digital literacy information access and controls from government. It is important to note that providing an appropriate level of access to internet is central to realizing the promise of the information and digital rights. This documentary provides a framework for thinking about the digital rights issues and offers ways of moving towards resolving the dilemma. Unwanted Witness is grateful to the partners that enabled us to do the research and also conduct the regional disseminations. Digital Human Rights Lab and GIZ enabled the team to be able to reach the person in the different districts. We are forever grateful for this support.
U U Uganda's internet usage has grown in recent years. The most wonderful innovation I have seen is the internet. Oh, the people from, from, from the age group of 26 years to 35 use internet more. What should the government do before making internet laws? They should do consultation with all, all the persons. We have a right to privacy, so this one should be made compulsory. I've, been, I've also been thinking that uh, my information is safe. I'm still lacking. These are issues that were raised in the report, but also came out during our regional meetings.